It's a New Zealander called Richard Pierce. An inventive young South Island farmer had pipped them to the post by nine months. As his sisters related... Well, I can't put an exact date, but I think it was between 1903 and 4. I was going to school then for the Lower Waitui School, riding the pony, and Ethel Bourne, my great mate, she was on hers, and we got talking away. And I said, do you remember, do you know that my brother Richard flew yesterday? She said, don't be silly, this is April Fool's Day. And uh, of course she knew he was making a plane, but she thought I was only pulling her leg. So that's how it happened. Some of them called him Mad Pierce. They thought he was a bit crazy. Uh, but uh, others, when they heard he was going to fly, quite a number of them gathered on the, this old shingly road. And uh, I remember my brother Warren was there. He was the one that was to set the propeller going. And he said he set it going, and there's a noise that was just about drowned you. <laughs> oh, yes. It's like the cows and the sheep, of course, were this terrific thing. The, the neighbors, the, the neighbors next door to them, they had sheep and cattle, too. And, uh, Everything went for the lives of the terrific noise. Yes. <laughs> no wonder they'd never seen anything like it before. And uh, Warren's hat flew off. And he said, the next thing, it started taxiing along the road, and it went so many yards, and it veered to the left, and got landed on top of a great big ten-foot gorse heads. It was a great bird to get it down again. So that was the end of the first flight. But uh, it went so many yards, we couldn't say how many. And uh, so anyway, he had to fix up something before he attempted again. That was only the beginning of things as far as he was concerned. Well, as I told you, he thought he's a little bit round the bend. Quite a big bit round the bend. Yes. <laughs> and to attempt such a thing as that, it had never been done before. And how much did a father know about that? <laughs> and the funny thing is that the people that talked like that then, they're the first to acclaim that he was before the Wright brothers, so yes. it just shows you They're how it tells They were frightfully keen on it then. So many of them saw him too. They were out in the paddock somewhere gathering potatoes and others working about, you know. Oh, yes, he had quite a crowd. How rumour gets about too in a small country district like that. There's no telephones or anything like that, but one tells the other and yes. everybody gets to and, know about and, it. And There's no doubt that Piers flew. 150 yards, it said, but the date is in dispute. Most of the testimony is linked to happenings in the Waitoi and Tamuka districts at that time. The failure of the potato crop, the big snow of 1903, the resignation of a local school teacher, and such folk memories, unhappily all too fallible. But Pierce was the first person to fly in the British Empire, if that term has any meaning anymore. He was among the very first to fly in the world. He may have been the very first of all. Although they were at the other end of the world from the American and European pioneers, New Zealand's early aviators showed courage and vision in their determination to fly. 